This video is to help you revise that practical where you investigated alcohol fermentation, so you looked at the production of alcohol by yeast. The whole point of this practical is to establish anaerobic conditions, so the removal of oxygen. Under anaerobic conditions, yeast will respire anaerobically to produce alcohol. This is known as alcohol fermentation. It's very important that you can write the equation to match what's going on. So yeast are anaerobically respiring. They're anaerobically breaking down glucose to give two ethanol molecules, two carbon dioxide molecules and two ATP molecules. So we set up our test flask in the lab. It was a conical flask into which was placed cooled boiled glucose solution, some yeast, a layer of oil was put on top of this and a fermentation lock into which we put some lime water. So our control was exactly the same setup, the conical flask with the cool boiled glucose solution, the layer of oil put on top of this, the fermentation lock to which was added some lime water, but there was no yeast. The control therefore in this particle is that there is no yeast in the control, no living organism to anaerobically respire. So how did we create those anaerobic conditions? Well, the first thing we did was we boiled our glucose solution and boiling drives out oxygen. Then we placed a layer of oil after we'd added our yeast and then we placed a fermentation lock on top of the conical flask. It's important to state that the glucose solution was cooled before you added the yeast. Why? Well, high temperatures will denature enzymes and yeast contain many enzymes. Also, high temperatures might actually kill the yeast cells themselves. The fermentation lock is a key piece of equipment used in this practical. Why did we use it? Well, the fermentation lock prevents the entry of microorganisms which could contaminate your flask. Also, the fermentation lock is very important in maintaining anaerobic conditions. We also added a layer of oil, but with a fermentation lock, it's not essential. When we did the practical, we did place a layer of oil into both the control and into the test flask, in addition to using the lock. This is an extra precaution, and in many books, you won't see both. We also added lime water to our fermentation lock, so it was useful in that it could prove that carbon dioxide was being produced in the test flask only. So those yeast cells anaerobically respiring are giving off CO2, which bubbles through the lime water and turns it milky. When the test and the control flask were ready to go, we placed them in a water bath, which was set at 30 degrees Celsius. The temperature was monitored using a thermometer and the water bath was left for 24 hours. After a few minutes, it was evident that something was happening. You could visualize bubbles of CO2 in one of the flasks, the test flask, but none in the control. Eventually, these bubbles will turn the lime water milky, but only in the test flask, not in the control. When you examine both flasks the next day, how do you know that fermentation has ceased? Well, the first thing you would notice is that there are no longer any bubbles of carbon dioxide being produced. You might also notice a layer of dead yeast. The next part of the practical was testing for ethanol, proving that the yeast had anaerobically respired and produced ethanol. The test for ethanol is the iodoform test, and this was the one that we conducted on both our samples. Yeast was removed from the test flask using filtration. Into a test tube, three cc's of the filtrate was placed into one test tube and three cc's of the control into another. To both the test and the control samples, Potassium iodide solution was added and then sodium hypochlorite solution. Both were heated in a water bath for five minutes. Yellow crystals appeared in the test flask, the flask which contained the yeast, and these yellow crystals are a positive result for ethanol. In the control, there were no yellow crystals produced, so this is a negative result for ethanol. We also conducted the same test using a sample of water, and you can see here on the right that no yellow crystals were produced. The formation of yellow crystals indicates a positive result for ethanol and this was only achieved in the flask that had contained the yeast cells. And remember that we adhered to those safety precautions. We wore gloves and goggles at all times. Before we commenced the practical, we ensured that all glassware was sterile to prevent any contamination. I hope the video is helping you to revise and helping you to remember exactly what you did during your practicals. Remember that these videos don't replace your textbook. You have to consult the syllabus, you have to do past papers, and you must always listen to your teacher's guidance. So I wish you the very best of luck with all of that revision.